Hello loves and welcome to today's video. Today I am going to be giving you a rundown of all of the books that I finished last month in April. It was a good month for me. I had a week of vacation which means that I was reading basically like 12 hours a day. It was lovely and relaxing. So I did finish 26 books in the month of April for a total of 4,931 pages and approximately 106 hours of audiobook. So doing this in order of worst to best, let's get started. The worst rated book that I read in April was The Death I Gave Him by M.X. Louis. This I gave a 2.25. It is a Hamlet retelling in like a futuristic environment where like Hamlet's dad was this scientist who ran a company and then transferred his consciousness into an AI which is how the ghost comes up. And I gave it a 2.25 because I felt that it tried to do too much unique things while also trying to be a Hamlet retelling. So if it had just stuck to being an original story it could have been really interesting and all of the Hamlet elements seemed kind of shoved in there and really detracted from the overall story. So 2.25 for that one. Next with 2.5 are two books that were lent to me by the same friend. So if you are this friend, I am so sorry. The first was Louis Riel, a comic strip biography. This was a graphic novel explaining the history of Louis Riel, who is a Canadian historical figure. It was very much about expansion into the West and the animosity between the French and English Canadians and the indigenous Canadians and all this settler colonial stuff. I don't really find Canadian history interesting. I understand its importance in that I live in Canada and I live on unceded indigenous land. But I don't find settler colonial little house on the prey bullshit to be interesting. This could have just been passable as a not for me. But the author wrote the English translation of the French but wrote it in a way that like made it clear that he was speaking in a French accent and it was so unbearable to have to read. That got a 2.5 for me. Next was Shut Up You're Pretty, which Shut Up Your Pretty Stories by Te Mutanji. So going into this, I thought this was going to be a series of unconnected short stories, but they did end up being connected stories. And it took me a couple stories to catch on to the fact that it was all the same characters. And I just didn't really connect with this one very much. It was very much about finding femininity through sexuality and how you shouldn't do that. And I don't know, I just didn't connect with it very much. 2.5 for that one as well. So sorry to the friend who lent me those two books. Next is Bright Young Women by Jessica Knoll. I'll try and keep this brief. If you want the full explanation as to why this book got such a low rating, you can check out the reading vlog I did for it. This book made me so irritated because it doesn't explicitly state anywhere that this is based on the real victims of Ted Bundy because it never explicitly mentions Ted Bundy. It just calls him the defendant, but then uses the real names of the victims and then also throws in its own like fictional story on top of that, which I won't discuss the ending of, but made me super uncomfortable. 2.5 for that one. I was enjoying it in the beginning until I realized what it was and then I just could not continue enjoying it knowing that it was based on real information. So 2.5 for Bright Young Women. And the last 2.5, Devil Takes You Home by Gabino Iglesias. This I listened to as an audiobook. It is about a Mexican immigrant in the States who has a large amount of medical debt because his daughter gets sick and he ends up joining the cartel. This story just wasn't for me. I thought it was going to be something very different. Uh, the Devil Takes You Home. I was expecting some kind of horror thing, but this was just about some guy who joins the cartel. And I get the noble intentions behind why he joined. It just wasn't for me in terms of the story. And I found myself zoning out a lot of the time and he made some very questionable decisions throughout. So 
2.5 for The Devil Takes You Home. Next up, we have Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson. This is a book about a woman who gets a call from an old, old friend asking for help taking care of her children. And it turns out the children spontaneously combust sometimes. I give this a 2.75 because it ends up in a place that I don't particularly enjoy books ending up. The writing was fine. This one just definitely wasn't for me. It's a theme in books that I don't particularly care for. And if you care about spoilers for the end of the book, you can skip ahead. I have to kind of spoil the end to explain why I didn't like it. This is a book where our main character starts out being like, I never want to have children. Children aren't for me. I don't particularly enjoy being in the presence of children. And of course, at the end, she ends up loving the children and adopting them. And I'm like, can we just have child-free women in books who don't learn to love children or learn to love their child or end the book being knocked up? Like, I hate that. Women are allowed to not want children and not have it be a character flaw that gets fixed by the end of the book. I was expecting a bit more leaning into the horror than like the children just kind of being cute and quirky. The ending, yeah. but made me not enjoy it. So 2.75 for nothing to see here. Also 2.75 for Death Before Wicket by Carrie Greenwood. This is the 10th book in the Franny Fisher mystery series, which was about a safe that gets robbed at a university and some papyrus scroll goes missing. So Franny has to try and track down the scroll. And I have now made it 10 books into the series and I have decided to DNF the series. I enjoyed some of the earlier ones. They were not high literature by any means, but I was enjoying, you know, the twist at the end. And then the last couple ones were getting kind of questionably political about calling a man from Chinese some terrible slurs, but like the main character condemns it. So, you know, it's okay. And then there was a discussion of like Israel and Palestine. Again, a little uncomfortable, but it made sense for the mystery. But then I read this one and I was just bored the whole time. I didn't like any of the characters that were introduced. The mystery wasn't even that interesting. So I think I've put in my effort for this series. I have 150 other series I could be reading instead of it. Maybe I'll return to it sometime in the future if I have a renewed interest in this kind of mystery story. But for now, I'm DNFing the Franny Fisher mystery series. Okay, 3.25. We didn't have any, just threes. So 3.25 is volume one of Slam. This is a graphic novel series about two friends who join a roller derby team and the relationship, friendship drama that ends up happening through roller derby experiences. I really liked the art style of this one. It was really cool, but the plot was just kind of so-so. It is volume one, so it is trying to establish the premise and the backstory. There were some cute quirky things and overall a 3.25. The other 3.25 was The Dark Prophecy, which is book two in the Trials of Apollo series by Rick Riordan. In this series, the god Apollo has been cursed by Zeus to live as a human until he completes a number of trials to regain his godhood. This one just felt a little bit repetitive. It followed the same similar kind of beats to the first one. It's introducing some of the Roman mythology and history, but I don't feel it's doing a particularly good job of establishing what that means. I don't know, I just didn't connect with this one quite as much as I have with some of the other Percy Jackson universe books by Rick Riordan, so this one was a 3.25 for me. Also acknowledging that these are books for children, so I'm not particularly the goal audience here. All right, 3.5 stars here. So we're getting into the little bit of the better ones. The first is The Siren by Catherine St. John. The Siren by Catherine St. John is kind of a thriller book about this film crew who's on this island making a film. And as is revealed throughout the book, 
Each of these characters kind of has a little bit of a backstory with each other, and there's a lot of lies and secrets that they're each trying to keep under wraps and keep the others from finding out about them. I enjoyed the kind of dynamics of the drama in this one. It wasn't the best, most shocking twist I've ever read. I did see it coming from quite a bit far away, but I did enjoy this. It was a fun little beach read to not take too seriously, so I gave it a 3.5. I also gave a 3.5 to Alone With You in the Ether by Olive Blake. This is a love story between a mathematician and an artist, and both of them have, you know, a history of mental health issues and kind of learn to love each other and themselves throughout. I was going into this with maybe too high of expectation. I had heard that the writing was really beautiful, and there were sections of it that were really beautiful, but they seemed kind of stuck in to other more mundane writing. It wasn't consistent throughout. And I just didn't find the love story between them to be very drawing or interesting. I wish it had leaned into some of the time travel aspects a bit more, which doesn't really make sense unless you've kind of read it. That one was a 3.5. I think it was more about my expectations for it weren't met more than there was anything concretely wrong with the book itself. Next to 3.5, we have Slam the Next Jam, which is volume two of the Slam comic about roller derby. I found the plot to be a bit more interesting in this one. The art style still looks cool. I don't think there's going to be a volume three because volume two was published in like 2018, but it was a really interesting comic that I wish they had gotten some more space to develop and go forward with, but 3.25 and 3.5 for one and two respectively. It was a fun read but nothing too spectacular. Also 3.5, we have A Curious Beginning by Deanna Rayborn, which is the first book in the Veronica Speedwell series. This is a Victorian mystery series that focuses on our lead character, Veronica Speedwell and her reluctant partner, Stoker. In this first one, Veronica's aunts have recently passed away and someone ends up breaking into her home. She partners up with a very reluctant stoker to try and figure out why someone is targeting her in the wake of the death of her aunts. She is a scientist who studies butterflies, so she's a very intellectual character. She's very quick-witted and cunning, and I give this a 3.5. I can see the potential in the series here. The first one didn't blow me away, but I see the potential. I am going to continue with the series, and as Veronica and Stoker grow closer, I do understand that I think there's a romance between them at some point. I'm going to continue with this series. Next, we have When Women Were Dragons by Kelly Barnhill. This is a book in which one day a bunch of women just kind of get fed up and turn into dragons and then society tries to pretend that didn't happen. Our main character is a child when this first happens. Her aunt turns into a dragon and just like her parents are like this is your sister. What do you mean that's not your cousin? Why would you say that's your cousin? It's your sister. She's always been your sister. So it kind of follows this girl as she grows up trying to come to terms with a world where she's being gaslit not to trust her own experiences. I really enjoyed this more than I thought I was going to. I gave it a 3.5. I am never usually a huge fan of following a main character who is a child in an adult fiction book. Those usually don't interest me very much. I really did enjoy the concept of women just getting so annoyed with men that they turn into dragons. I loved that. That was so cute. So I did enjoy this and where the story did eventually go. So a 3.5 from me for Kelly Barnhill's When Women Were Dragons. Next we have Dead in the Family by Charlene Harris. This is the 10th book in the Sookie Stackhouse series. This book I gave a 3.5 because I did find interesting elements of the plot here and there. There was just so much going on with the plot. We've kind of got to a point where we've established so many loose ends in previous plot lines and we're trying to tie some of them up but then also still three books left so we're leaving some of them open so we have the fairies we have the shifters we have the werewolves which are sometimes different stories sometimes connected stories and then also the vampires and everybody's just kind of 
running around with their heads chopped off sometimes literally, you know what I mean? So I'm hoping these kind of books are just establishing where we're going for the climax in the end so we can have one big bam boom and then just finish the series. So it wasn't bad. I did enjoy elements of the plot, but we're trying to do too much now. Let's 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 bring it back into a single cohesive narrative. Next, we have Ripe by Sarah Rose Etter. This is about a millennial woman who has become disillusioned with her Silicon Valley corporate job. Oh, also she's been followed around by a black hole for her entire life. What's going on with that? Who knows? I really enjoyed some of the critiques, criticisms, explanations of how soul-sucking corporate America is, which if my boss is watching this, I definitely didn't relate to at all. But this again had an ending that I don't like that freaking trope. It's the same as nothing to seem here, if I remember correctly. Maybe I'm misremembering. Who knows at this point? But I hate that trope so much that, yeah, it kind of ruined the rest of the book for me. But still, I liked some of those elements, so we're overall given. 3.5. The next at 3.75 we have Moon of the Turning Leaves by Wubashe Bryce. This is the sequel to Moon of the Crusted Snow that I read last month. In this one there's been a like 15 year time jump and the community has been maybe not thriving but surviving after the apocalypse but the area they're living in is running out of natural resources so they're gonna have to get up and move somewhere where it's a bit more sustainable. So a group of five or six of them decide that they are going to go ahead and scout to see if they can find a new place to settle. And they haven't left their community in 15 years. They don't know what the rest of the world has been up to, if there are even any other survivors after the apocalypse from 15 years ago. I give this one a 3.75. I didn't like it quite as much as Moon of the Crusted Snow because of what it is genre-wise. I don't really like the whole hunting, camping, adventure stories, and this felt a bit more in that genre. I did enjoy it despite that, so it gets a 3.75, but it just was not going to be a 5 star for me because of that. But if you do like that kind of book, I'd recommend checking out both of the books because overall I did enjoy this series. And a nonfiction making an appearance on the list, Girly Drinks, A Woman's History of Drinking by Mallory O'Meara. This is a history of women's drinking. So a history of the way women have contributed over the years to the production the creation, the marketing, etc., of alcohol. And I read this in Mexico because I'm like, if I'm gonna read a book about alcohol, I need to have a free bar somewhere nearby just in case I hear about a drink that I'm like, ooh, I wanna try. I didn't end up doing any of that. There wasn't really anything mentioned that I'm like, okay, yes, that's a new drink I had never heard about and I wanna try it. But I did find it interesting. Some of the stuff I did kind of already know about how women used to brew beer at home and stuff like that. It did get kind of a little repetitive of like, women are contributing to the alcohol industry and then men shut them out of it. If you are interested in the history of alcohol and wanted a women's perspective on it, it was, a decently put together and read book. It just didn't grab me as a topic as much as I was hoping for, so a 3.75. Next on the list we have our four star books. So the first one is a manga. It is Cat Plus Gamer Volume 1 by Wataru Natatani. I did my best. This is about a woman who works in an office and it's really antisocial. She never joins them for drink after work. She does her work and she logs off right when she's supposed to, which relatable. So then she, for some reason, says yes to adopting a cat. Even she doesn't know why she said yes to adopting this kitten that someone found in the parking lot. And she in her personal life, just plays video games all the time. Again, relatable. And then she has to find a way to alter her routine to incorporate this new kitten into her life and it's so cute and as someone who works an office job and then plays video games I very much related to the main character. This one was really cute. I enjoyed it. I gave it a four star. Another four star was Serious Case of the Appleton Angels by Janice Hallett. This is kind of a mixed media book I think because I did this one as an audiobook so I'm assuming it had things formatted as articles but I couldn't tell you for sure. Definitely there were WhatsApp conversations. This book was about a cult killing that years later someone is trying to track down the baby that almost became a human sacrifice. She 
digs and digs and tries to find this out before a rival journalist also investigating with the same thing finds it out before her. She obviously uncovers a lot of twists and turns as we go deeper and deeper. I thought this one was really interesting. Cult? So interesting. Satanic cults? Interesting. The mixed media approach of finding out things as they get slowly uncovered by the journalist. I enjoyed that. I had a lot of fun with the way that it was formatted, even though again, I did it in audio. So I don't know how much the physical would change that, but I found the end to be a little, not disappointing, just not quite what I was expecting and hoping for in terms of bombastic plot twist. It was a four overall for me. I enjoyed my experience with it. Just go in with reasonable expectations on the ending. Next we have book two in the Veronica Speedwell series, A Perilous Undertaking. Again, this is by Deanna Rayborn and this is kind of what I was saying about seeing that potential in that first book because the second book was an improvement. We were at a four star. I'm not quite in love with it as much as I have seen other people be in love with it, but I'm hoping it grows on you. In this one, a very prestigious woman asks Veronica to investigate something on the down low, and she kind of uncovers some secrets about some very high ranking people throughout her investigation. And I do enjoy, again, the characters in these books. I was concerned that Veronica in her like quirky cunning thing would get grading at some point but I don't mind it as much as I thought I was going to. I do enjoy Stoker as a character and the mystery was pretty interesting here so a four star and I am looking forward to getting more into the series and see if we can keep up that momentum of getting better each time. Next is an arc that I was very kindly provided by NetGalley for How to Become the Dark Lord and Die Trying by Django Wexler. This is a book about our main character who is a woman kind of caught in a time loop. So she wakes up and there's a wizard there saying, you have to save the universe from the Dark Lord. And she's tried like 200 times and the Dark Lord always wins. So she says, you know what? I give up trying to protect the world from the Dark Lord. I'm going to become the Dark Lord. So there's this like summit thing in the mountains that chooses who the next Dark Lord is. So she has to try and convince people to become her minions, make it to the mountains and become chosen as the next Dark Lord. And this one definitely won't be for everyone because it definitely had a kind of like quippy style. And also I did see some concerns from people in the reviews of like how overtly sexual the main character was, which didn't bother me, but might bother other people. I had fun with this one and I definitely liked the concept a lot of like, you know what? I'm joining the dark side because I'm so sick of getting my ass beat on the good side. Definitely a relatable video game character experience. So I enjoyed this one. It was a 4.0, but depending on how quirky and quippy you like your writing, this one might not be for you. Okay, 4.25 stars. We have Butcher and Blackbird by Bryn Weaver. I read this for my book club. I did a whole reading vlog on it, so I will link that in the cards if you would rather watch that whole review with my thoughts throughout it. But this did end up being a 4.25. This is a book that I just kind of vibed with. Obviously, since I do these reviews, I do try to think critically about the books I'm reading, what I'm liking, what I'm not liking, whether other people would enjoy it, all these things. This was just a vibe for me. There were serial killer references, there were movie references. This is a serial killer romance. We have our two main characters, Sloan and Rowan, who are both serial killers who kill other serial killers. They accidentally, without realizing it, target the same victim and end up having a three-year competition to see who's the superior serial killer serial killer and eventually end up falling in love. I saw the plot twist coming. It was not anything that surprised me in this except for maybe how uh steamy the sex scenes got but I had fun so it was a 4.25. Also this referenced Keanu Reeves like two separate times like a hundred pages apart and I'm like you know the way to my heart. That's what gets you the extra 0.25 instead of just the four. 
Keanu Reeves references. Next 4.25 we have Shutter Island by Dennis Lehane. This was another of my vacation reads. So in Shutter Island we follow a main character who is some kind of law enforcement who hears that someone has broken out of this island prison and he's been sent to investigate where this woman went because obviously the prison's on an island. There's not many places she could have gone and there's no evidence of how she escaped or anything like that. So he goes to the island to investigate this prison break and then things devolve very quickly from there. I really enjoyed this one. The kind of plot twist here and trying to piece together all the different clues and hints throughout the book. It got a 4.25. I am looking forward to watching the movie now. And we are skipping straight from 4.25 to 5 stars. I didn't have any 4.5s or 4.75s. I had not one, but two 5 star reads this month. The first you may already know because it was in my reading blog. This Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. I just loved how this was written. I loved the characters. I loved everything about it. I felt like I was wrapped in a nice blanket burrito with Brandon Sanderson's words. I loved every moment of this. So five stars for Tress of the Emerald Sea. I think that it was a really good introduction to Brandon Sanderson's writing, even if you haven't read any of the other Cosmere novels, and I will be reading the other Cosmere novels. I already bought some of them. So Tress of the Emerald Sea, five stars, very much recommend it. Also, it's so pretty. And the other five star for the month of April and my third of the year, House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danielewski. This is an adventure of a book in which there is a documentary about this house that has a closet that turns into a labyrinth and there's no way that this hall should exist in this house. It doesn't make any sense. So the text of the book is this guy Zampano analyzing this documentary. Then in the footnotes you have this other guy Johnny Truant who has found Zampano's book and is adding kind of his own footnotes as he's reading through it and is kind of descending into madness. And the thing about this book is it is structured in a way that kind of makes you feel like you're lost in a labyrinth. So you have pages like this where the regular text is taking you to a footnote and you have to read the text five pages forward and then when you get to that one it has another footnote that makes you go five pages back and then you read that footnote and it takes you to the appendix and the appendix takes you back to a different page and it just was such an experience to read and I had to give it five stars because I just had so much fun reading this and getting my little highlighter out to decode messages at the back of it. And I don't think I could have read this if I hadn't been on vacation and been able to give it my full daily attention. So that is the wrap up for the month of April. Let me know in the comments down below the best book that you read in April or if you don't want to do that leave the house emoji for House of Leaves. If you'd like to watch my future videos don't forget to subscribe and have a great day!